were dark. No one knew he was there. All the who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claws hissed as he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it then, so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a minute or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little who stockings hung all in a row. These stockings, he Grinched, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns, pampoonas, pantoufas and drums, checkerboards, bistle binks, popcorn and plums. And he stuffed them in bags, then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. <laughs> You're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd take the um, seasick crocodile. You're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. You're the king of sinful sots. You're a heart of dead tomato swatched with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. You're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. Icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. Now, grin the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. As the Grinch took the tree, as he started to shove, he, he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was no more than two. She stared at the Grinch and said, Candy Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. <laughs> my, my sweet. 
sweet little tot. Fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that, that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who was in bed with her cup, he crumped to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar, and the last thing he took was the log for their fire. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. You naughty ate me, Mr. Grinch, with a nauseous super nauseous. You're a crooked jerky jockey, and you drive a crooked hoss, Mr. Grinch. Your soul is an appalling dump heap, overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of rubbish imaginable, mangled up in tangled up knots. You're a foul one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Your heart is full of unwashed socks. Your soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stank, stunk. a quarter of dawn, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their snoof and their fuzzles, their tringlers and trappings. <laughs> feet up. Up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip-top, 